Welcome to The Late Show, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. You know, over the last six years... Over the last six years, we've all had a lot of fun with the idea that nothing means anything, there are no consequences, tear up your history books and live in a cave. But occasionally, every so often, and this is one of those so oftens, something means something. And meaning of any kind is kryptonite for former president, the Count of Mostly Crisco. <laughs> Long time. <laughs> Long time viewers of America will recall that last month the FBI went into Mar-a-Lago and found a bunch of documents that are super top secret, which is super top illegal. And the former president has desperately been trying to stall the investigation because he is super top guilty. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> we good? Lawyers good? Okay. And right away, he got some help from conservative judge and girl from the ring who went to law school. <laughs> Eileen Cannon. Judge Cannon appalled the legal community when she ruled the Justice Department could not use the over 100 classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago in their criminal investigation of the over 100 classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. She said the DOJ had to wait. They just wait until those documents had been reviewed by something called a special master, which she said would take until November 30th. November 30th! That would give the president way too much time to hide all the remaining evidence. I can imagine how he would stuff his Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> and... <laughs> mm. Mm. Good. The Christmas That's good. can. Mm. <laughs> the Justice Department warned Cannon that they would appeal her ridiculous ruling unless she modified it in some way. She said she wouldn't, so they appealed it. And last night, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that the Justice Department can use the Mar-a-Lago documents <laughs> in its criminal probe. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> oh, shucky ducky, something means something. Come it's on. happening. Actions have consequences. I am so excited to find out the unimaginable permanent damage this is done to our national security. USA! <laughs> the appeals court obliterated the former president's most frequent defense, writing, the plaintiff suggests that he may have declassified these documents when he was president, but the record contains no evidence that any of these records were declassified. Yes, thank you. You can't say there's an alibi and then produce no evidence of your alibi. Officer, I couldn't have robbed that bank. I was at dinner with my girlfriend. What's her name and where did we have dinner? That's on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know that I made that <laughs> up. <laughs> Importantly... <laughs> drop the, sorry about the language. <laughs> okay, sorry about okay. the language. <laughs> Family show. Now, importantly, the appeals court also noted that declassifying an official document would not change its content or render it personal, and therefore, the declassification argument is a red herring. Red herring, also what the former president calls a filet fish smothered in ketchup. <laughs> now, to add insult... Now... <laughs> in ketchup. To add insult to injury, two... Of the three judges on the panel were appointed by the former president. <laughs> oh. That's got a sting. That's like getting a Father's Day mug that says, Dad of the Year is now Mom's new boyfriend. We love you, Rick. <laughs> Rick's a good guy. Right Rick's good a really things. solid guy. You'd like him. Last night, uh, to defend himself, the former president sat down with Fox News host and stepdad who ran over the hamster. <laughs> Sean Hannity. First up, the former president claimed that despite there being absolutely zero evidence, all the documents found at Mar-a-Lago had been declassified thanks to a special power. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. That's right. <laughs> oh, that, oh, no, that's right. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's on. true. No, no, that's true. That's true. <laughs> he declassified them with his mind. <laughs> Pick a document. Pick a document. Pick a document. If you have the document, hold it in your mind. Don't tell me what it is. Are these your launch codes? <laughs> One itsy-bitsy 
Problem. <laughs> The claim that a president can declassify documents just by thinking about it is not supported by prior practice or legal precedent. <laughs> oh, really? How about <laughs> now? <laughs> Still no? Okay. All right. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Former president. <laughs> <laughs> former president then used his mind to make more dumb words come out of his stupid mouth. There doesn't have to be a process. There can be a process, but there doesn't have to be. You're the president. You make that decision. So when you send it, it's declassified. We... I declassified everything. Everything. <laughs> okay, I'll hop on that crazy train. Let's say he telepathically declassified everything. <laughs> like he was wearing a treason cerebro. <laughs> that means... That means... he thinks it's a good idea somehow for everyone to know foreign nuclear secrets and somehow getting all the names of America's undercover spies out there. How is that better? Isn't getting the names of all of America's undercover spies what Tom Cruise is trying to steal? in the first Mission Impossible. <laughs> and somehow, I cannot picture the former president in that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, wow. put that back... Put that back up. Can I see that again? Oh, damn! Oh, damn! The president... <laughs> to quote... To quote from my youth, baby got back. <laughs> Right? Yes? I believe the term is cake. Then... Hey, oh, oh, hey! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we just broke the internet, you guys. <laughs> then the former president claimed that he didn't pack the boxes, so he didn't know what was in the boxes. Then he said exactly what was in the boxes. Boxes and boxes of pictures, uh, newspaper articles, uh, tremendous... even kitchen things. You have tremendous amounts of different items. Much clothing. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Much clothing. Many shirts. Very pant. Such sock. <laughs> then... Then... Then the stable genius complained about what the FBI took from the boxes. They took yeah. a lot. I think they took my will. I found out yesterday. I said, where is it? You know, things are going really well when a guy says, I was looking for my will yesterday. Why? No reason. Now, where are my three passports and my bag of mustaches? <laughs> After that, the former pre... <laughs> Why not? Quality Why joke. not? Quality joke. <laughs> you will enjoy these jokes. <laughs> After that, the former president's excuses got weirder. There's also... A lot of speculation, because of what they did, the severity of the FBI coming and raiding Mar-a-Lago, were they looking for the Hillary Clinton emails that were deleted, but they are around someplace? Were they looking for the well, wait, spying you or say Trump's... you had it, dude. No, no, they may be saying... They uh, may have thought that it was in did. there. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is so crazy. That's so crazy, he confused Sean Hannity. And Sean comes pre-confused. <laughs> at this point, he's just throwing out magnetic conspiracy theories at the refrigerator <laughs> to see what they spell out. Uh, maybe they were looking in my basement for the Sasquatch who shot JFK with Hunter Biden's laptop with his partner, the Chupacabra, who hung Jeffrey Epstein with Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate chemtrails. <laughs> then... Then... mar lago The Mar-a-Lago investigation isn't the only legal trouble for the ex-prez. Yesterday, the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, held a press conference to announce a massive lawsuit against the ex-president's business... <laughs> ..for repeatedly lying about the value of his assets in order to defraud the banks who were giving him loans. But on Hannity, the former president trotted out a watertight defense 
The banks should have known I'm a liar. We have a disclaimer right on the front. And it basically says, you know, get your own people. You're at your own risk. Uh, this was done by management. It wasn't done by... A, it was done by management. So don't rely on the statement that you're getting. Then why have a statement? I don't... What kind of excuse is that? We put on the standard disclaimer, I'm lying. <laughs> I would love to see him close a business deal. Shall we shake on it? Psych! <laughs> now, what's this? What's... What's... Is this happening right now? Is this happening right now? I'm being told that there is breaking squirrel news. Take a look at this footage that went viral this week of a Pennsylvania man at home trying to conduct a work Zoom call. Purposes of, you know, town hall, let, <coughs> let's just get in to... Um, let's, let's, let's just get in via, via light. Um, uh, Chuck, can you mute? <laughs> Intense. Now, that might seem like an extreme reaction to a squirrel getting loose in your house, but apparently it's not the first time. As he explained to the Internet, over the years, I've been terrorized by squirrels. <laughs> adding... Ah! 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 We got a great show for you tonight. I'll be talking to the star of Somebody Feed Phil. Bill Rosenthal, but when we come back, it's Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs>